Hi and welcome back to my channel. I am going to go into this thrift store here and try to find some things that I can thrip, thrip, oh my gosh. Hey everybody, I'm at the thrift store again and I am not going to do a full video of a thrift store. I'm just telling you I'm looking for some Christmas uh, thrift flip ideas and I'm using the new IOD Christmas collection for 2024 and I want to find something to use them with. So I'm going to head in and see what they have. I'll give you a little bit of footage of what, what I find and then uh, we'll get to the crafting. I did make it home and I didn't get any footage and I apologize but I will show you as we go through the video what items I picked up and why I picked them up for my DIYs with the IOD Christmas collection. So let's get to the first project and I hope you enjoy it. So I picked up this cute planter. It's already cute as it is and I apologize for my lighting. It's so bad in, in this house. Uh, but it is kind of a creamish on the bottom and then a bluish and green kind of coloring on the top. And I'm using the stamps from IOD and they have the covers so that you can do like different uh, levels, um, like dimensions. So they say that you need to prime them with some uh, sandpaper and just gently rub on them to kind of rough up the edges to pick up the paint or ink. Here's a better look of it. It uh, didn't take much cleaning to get it to look really nice, but I'm just looking at which side I want to do the trees on. And so I thought the more dimensional kind of side there would look better. So then I'm going to take this Moss Waverly chalk paint and I'm just put a little bit on some parchment paper and used my brayer to kind of roll over it. And I'm going to start off with the larger one and put it on the cover portion that comes with the stamps. And I'm trying to see where I want to put them before I actually put the paint on and measure how far down I need to put the paint. So this one, I'm only using like the top half portion of it and putting this pretty moss paint on it. And you don't need a ton of paint, which is really nice. And the brayer helps so that it uh, evenly places it onto the stamp so that you don't get a lot of like clumpy paint. So now I have to kind of rough up the areas of where I'm going to stamp it so that it can adhere to it nicely because it does have somewhat of that uh, glaze on it. So you want to just make sure to wipe it off before you put your stamp on. So I want this bigger one kind of off center and so I'm putting that down first and just trying to make sure not to smudge it and just gently press all the way around to everywhere that you want it to be put on. Um, the, the good thing is is you can always go over it if you're really careful. See how pretty it turns out? I, I love this. This one turned out really super cute. So then I'm going to take that protectant sheet that comes with the set to cover that tree that I just painted and roughing up the rest of the edges, um, which I should have done to begin with. But it's nice to have this cover because once I'm done, I can put another stamp on top of it, like to the side and it'll look like it's behind the tree instead of in front of it, which is really cool how they do this. I love it. IOD sells their own brand of ink, but I'm using this one that I've had for the smaller trees. And you're just gonna wanna dab it on there and um, you know, put as much ink on it as you want, but you don't wanna put too much because it will smear. Ink will be more difficult to put on something slick like this than the chalk paint is I found out. So you just want to wipe around the stamp so that none of that gets onto your project. 
Um, unless you're going for like a distress look, that would look cute. But this one, I didn't want that to show up. So then I'm just gonna take this part here and put it on the end portion of the pot um, with that tree. And I wanted it to look like it was behind, so I'm using the, the cover here again so that um, I can make it look like that black ink is behind the tree. It looked pretty, but it wasn't as dark on the green as I wanted it to be. So I went over it again with the same tree and made sure that it went on a little bit darker and it turned out a lot better. And just make sure that all the areas that you want pressed down, that you gently press on it. And see, it made it look fuller. So then I just put the trees wherever you know I thought looked really pretty and I did them in different heights and this one kind of smeared but it turned out really cute once I got it fixed and I just did like an alteration of uh, black green black green I'm using that cover sheet again so that this looked like it's behind the bigger tree but in front of the smaller tree and it turned out so cute i really i really love this project and i want to go buy more planners so i can do them and possibly sell them i think they would make a perfect gift for christmas you could put a plant in them you could do goodies and you know like utensils and stuff for kitchen and wrap it up and put a bow on it you could put anything in it for Christmas and it would just come out super cute and I'm just trying to decide where I want to put this last one I just think all the dimensions on it and the black and the green just made everything pop out and I really enjoyed doing this project let me know what you think this video is a part of a collaboration Christmas Palooza and the host is Indiana Jones and she puts this together for us and we are so grateful. You'll have to check out her channel and her link will be listed down below in my description box, as well as the playlist that you'll wanna check out everyone's video to see what they created. It's anything Christmas inspired and I hope that you will enjoy the playlist as well as this video and subscribe to everyone's channel. Now let's get back to my Christmas projects. Now these are the Christmas tapers and they're made to look like vintage icicles. You can do them two-sided, but I'm only going to do one side for this project. I want to just set them into, you know, like a silver cup that I have with my vintage Christmas stuff. And so that's just what I'm doing. And I'm only going to do two of these. So you want to get some cornstarch and put on the bottom of, the, of each mold because you don't want the clay to stick to the mold at all and then it'll rip it up. So I ended up putting the cornstarch in all of them thinking I was going to work with all of them but I ended up only, like I said, doing two of them. I'm just taking some of that uh, air dry clay and rolling it out to um, kind of help get it to the size that I want. And my hands were really hurting my fingers. Um, I have arthritis osteoarthritis through my fingers and my uh, joints in my body so it was really storming this last couple of weeks and everything has just made me hurt <laughs> so I was having a, a difficult time with this but I ended up getting it done so that I think that's why I ended up only doing the two but I, you just have to push it in um, to get it into the mold really well and then use your fingers to push the excess out and you want to get those edges um, out like move it the clay outward so that it um, comes out of the mold and you can rub the sides of the mold really easily and to get the definition definition that you want and then smooth out the back portion as best you can you can also use some water 
to smooth out that back so that it's uh, flat. And then once you have it all smoothed out how you want it, just take it and gently remove it from the mold um, and it shouldn't stick to it and be careful with the thinner areas because it could break very easily. I'm just taking some excess off of there, but it ended up looking super cute. And here's the snowman one that I did. It turned out cute too. So you'll want to ha have them dry for at least overnight, which I did, and maybe a little longer. And um, I'm just showing you how they turned out. That one kind of curled up on the peak of it, the bottom. And then this one turned out really good, just straight. And they're just super pretty the way they are. And they are white, but they're not as white as the white that I want to put on. And it won't show the dimension as much until you paint it. So I'm just going over it with some white chalk paint and giving it just one coat on each. So I have this antiquing uh, gold kind of rub and buff type of thing that I'm going to use to kind of highlight the grooves of the that are raised on it and not necessarily go completely over it. I'm not sure if I ended up liking how it turned out, but it still was pretty. So I kind of was trying to use my finger and then I got a little carried away and put a little too much on, but then it can wash off as long as you hurry and get to it before it dries and right there. And it just didn't look right. So I hurried and grab a rag <laughs> and then wipe that down. So then I got just a stencil brush and kind of did dry brushing on it with the gold and got into the grooves and everything and it turned out better that way. And I'll just let you watch and see how it turned out. And I'll show you how I design them at the end of the video. After they dried, I wasn't happy with how they looked. They looked dirty and not pretty. <laughs> so I'm going over them completely with the vintage antiquing gold. And there's a little bit of white here and there and they look so much better. I thrifted this sign for $2 and I thought it would be perfect for this project that I want to do. And I should have sanded the letters down, but I'm lazy. <laughs> and I decided, you know, the paint would cover it, which it did after I think I did three coats. But I'm doing kind of a messy, rustic look to it. So around the edges, I'm not painting the full wood. I'm just going to paint over the letter parts and then make it look kind of rustic. So this is a paint inlay and while the paint is wet, I'm taking this tree and I'm thinking I should have cut the paper closer to the tree than I did, but this is the first time using this and I've already ruined one of them. So I learned from my mistakes. You wanna do it wet, cause it's a lot easier. Just gently press down as you go um, and make sure that it's flat. I used a brayer on the last one and it didn't work very well because my brayer wasn't flat and so it ruined it completely. So I just think using your fingers and getting the bubbles out is probably the easiest and best way to do it. So then I forgot to mention that you want to put the uh, pitcher with the grid side up and then now use a spray bottle or spritzer of water and spray it down and then get a rag and just dab the water off 
and you're kind of pressing the, um, the print into the paint and that's how it becomes inlays into the paint. <laughs> so it ends up being really simple once you figure it out and once you know a technique that works best for you because um, like I said, my first one wasn't so great. And so it does take some time to get used to it. And as you're dabbing it, you know, you can see where it needs a little bit more water and just spritz a little bit more and then dab it. So you want to make sure everything is completely dry before you do this step. And you want to gently pull the paper back. And if the image is not inlaid the way that you want or it's not fully there, put it back down and then spritz it again and it should, um, and do your dabbing again and it should still work. So mine right in this area here looked like it wasn't working so I had to kind of spritz it again and um, lay it back down. So it turns out really pretty but you just have to be patient and you have to be very delicate with it so that it doesn't rip and that your image is exactly how you want it. And look how pretty it turns out already. And we're not done yet. <laughs> so this part I totally didn't plan. I put the tree off center uh, from top to bottom. And so I thought it would need something underneath the tree to kind of balance it out. I originally was gonna put the word Christmas, but my daughter gave me the idea to do O Christmas tree, just with an O and Christmas but it looked kind of plain with just the O so I did the O and an apostrophe then Christmas and then tree underneath it turns out so beautiful I'm I originally was bawling because I ruined the first one <laughs> and so I guess it was meant to be because this really turned out beautiful so as you can see, I lined it up onto one of the plastic covers that come with the stamps, and then I just used my ink pad and dabbed it on. And I kind of measured be beforehand to put lines of where I, I needed it to go, and I'm just making sure that it's, it's pretty much straight. So then I'm just gonna push down on it, and I only have one of each letter, so I have to wait to finish it off with the S at the end. So now I'm taking that single S and using the ink pad to put some on and then just putting that at the end of the word Christmas. So now doing the word tree, I can only de do the T-R-E right now and then pull the the single E off and do it again. <laughs> so um, we're just gonna measure that out because I have my little mark of where the center is just above the eye in Christmas. So I'm kind of gauging that as far as where I want the tree word to be. And just making sure that it's somewhat level <laughs> and that it looks good and it turns out really good I'm so proud of this piece so wait till you see when it's completely finished because we're still not done after this so now I'm taking that same vintage uh, antiquing gold and I'm going to do the star and all of the ornaments and just highlight the certain areas that are white showing if that makes sense so that the color will just pop out I think it turned out so pretty let me know what you think So for the sake of this video, I didn't have time to finish this project, but this project is my next video, so make sure to stay tuned next week and see how I use this mold.
thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have made it this far, I hope that you will consider to subscribe if you haven't already. And make sure to check out that playlist for the Christmas Palooza that Annie is hosting. So make sure you like each video, comment, give them all some love as well as give me some love too. I really would like to hear from you as far as what you think of my projects. And also I'm trying to get monetized. So if you could help by sharing the video, my channel and getting the word out, I would really appreciate it. I appreciate every single person who is supported me and I love you all so much. And I just hope that you all have a wonderful day.